Hi, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Bengal Magazine. And on the show, we're going to talk a little hoops. First up, Fadre Ansari, the head coach of the Bengals, the men's team, and uh, Fadre's bringing along senior Mike Henry. Hard to, hard to believe, but Mike Henry is now a senior. Uh, Kevin Clifford from women's basketball joins us, and Kevin has Katie Villarini, his outstanding freshman guard from Hamburg. Mark Howlett from Men's Soccer. We're not talking soccer. We're talking about some community outreach that the soccer program does. So Mark's going to talk a little bit about that. Of course, we have Boy Wonder, Patrick Smith, from Bengal Update. And the Athlete of the Week is on the show as well. So we've got a big show. We're going to come back and talk a little hoops with Fadre Ansari. Stay with us. Amazing what you don't see that goes on in this studio. But uh, welcome back, everybody. We're going to talk a little men's basketball. And Fadre Ansari joins us, the head coach of the Bengals, along with Mike Henry. And I said in uh, in the tease, my gosh, it's hard to believe that Mike's a senior. You're probably going, Fadre, one more year, please, Mike, one more year. But uh, he is a senior, and Mike's going to join us in a little bit. Uh, coach, it's the home stretch. Uh, three conference games left. But let's reverse the truck a little bit. What have you liked most about this team as you've coached them and seen them progress? Well, it's been a, a, a challenge, I think, for all of the uh, players and coaching staff because we had a new team. Sure. And Mike is probably the, it was the only experienced returning player. And it has seven freshmen and <laughs> three sophomores. And, um, Other than so that, it's great. <laughs> 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 um, but it, it's been rewarding to see the growth albeit a little later than I had hoped, but mm-hmm. you know, we have to, the cliche show, trust the process. And, um, right. and I think the, uh, the future is really bright and the, the guys are learning and um, it's, it's have taken a while to get together. You know, like any new team at, at any level, you know, right. we even see professional teams when they have these all-stars that join the team, it takes a while to kind of well, yeah. merge the chemistry. So, Absolutely. Uh, and you know, Mike's um, been put in a tough, position, you know, kind of inherited a new team where when he was a freshman, it was kind of the opposite, That's you right. know, and, um, but his, you know, his numbers have maintained consistency and, um, um, it's a battle and we, um, we, it's, it's been, it's been rewarding all, all overall. Yeah. Michael, it's, uh, it has been a challenging year and I, and I would think it would be for you, especially your senior year, uh, and all the young, the youngsters, as we call them. Maybe your most trying year from a leadership and an on-court presence as you look around and kind of go, where, where are all the veterans? And, and they're not there. It must, have been, it, it must be very difficult for you. Yes, uh, it was difficult this year, but I love my team. Um, yeah. Like you said, the youngsters, the freshmen, they're great. They're not, they're not scared to shoot the ball. You don't really <laughs> okay. see a lot of things like that. Right. Um, you know, by their junior year, they're going to be top scorers. Yeah. He has meant so much. He has been the face of the program uh, for – a, a few years, uh, and when you look back on his on, on his career, and you look statistically at his career, it's it's really quite amazing. Uh, sophomore, junior, senior, uh, came in second semester as a freshman, uh, but sophomore, junior, senior. I mean, a leader in scoring, leader in assists, leader in rebounding. I mean, really has been one of the players on the team. When you when you reflect back on his career and what he's meant, talk to us about. Mike Henry. Well, I just remember meeting him in the old dinky YMCA gym in, in uh, Syracuse. <laughs> um, <laughs> a friend of mine. So that just seems like, um, you know, seems like a long time, and then at the same time, seemed like a, a yesterday. Right. And um, I remember his first game. He actually, when he joined us in Midway in his freshman year, he actually made an impact. We were on the road in um, a tournament in, in New Jersey, which we wind up um, uh, winning, and I think we. Uh, other than this year, we actually won every tournament uh, that we've been in, uh, you know, non-league tournament. Wow. Uh, and Mike has been an instrumental part of that all the way. Um, he's, you know, he's versatile. He just plays in almost every position. Um, and he's, and it's, you can't really put a measure on how much he uh, is going to be missed um, mm-hmm. in terms of the, uh, his, his numbers, you know, take for granted. It's going to be hard to, um, to replace. 
but always uh, uh, spirited. Very never, good. Never a dull moment. No. <laughs> and on the court, too. He plays with passion and emotion, and it, yeah. he wears it on his sleeve at times, and, that, and that's yeah. great. Mike, mm -hmm. uh, reflect for us as you, as you look back on your four years, especially the last three. What, what do you think about most? It's crazy. Like Coach Paz was just saying, it feels like yesterday. Yeah. I came in, I moved into Tower 2, <laughs> you know, straight, straight off a of J term, um, played my first tournament in New Jersey. I looked on the bench, he called my name, I was just zoning out, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to play, it was like I only had like three practices, so um, right. that, that was just a big moment. That was probably one of the biggest moments of my life, honestly. Did you ever think it would be, it would turn out, you're the 17th player now to score a thousand points in Bengals history, and there's been some incredible Bengal basketball over those years. Do you ever kind of look back and go, how did this all happen? Wow. Or is it what you kind of expected, you know, as a collegiate player? Um, it hit me fast, and I did not expect it, I'll be honest. Hmm. Greatest game, greatest memories? Uh, that was definitely one. New Jersey. Um, Your first year yep, as a freshman. First championship. Okay. Um, sophomore year, we, we went to Lehman College um, down in Bronx, New York, and uh, we won that tournament also. Um, wow. Individually, uh, I had a big three and uh, to put in a double overtime, and I ended up fouling out with, like the first minute in double overtime. But uh, <laughs> trusting my team, we got the we got the there win. There you go, absolutely, yep. guys. We've got uh, three games left in the conference. Mm -hmm. Playoff is not secured. Uh, some victories needed here. Mm -hmm. So we've got Oswego, Cortland, Fredonia on the road, mm -hmm. not here. What's it going to take? Well, uh, we're going to have to try to co control the tempo of the game. You know, uh, our league is tough. There's no nights off. Um, good coaching, experienced coaching. Um, everybody does their homework, so they try to, you know, it's, it's a, I tell the players we have to play chess at times. It's not a checkers game. Huh. Um, and especially down the stretch, you have to be able to. So we, we let a few games get away this year um, like that, so we can't afford to let that happen here. Um, Oswego, we certainly let that game get away at, at yep. home. Um, they are not as deep as I think we are, but we, we're going to have to really uh, pressure them, not let them be comfortable in, in, in executing. Right. Um, Cortland's always tough. We knocked them off last year, their play, so they, they had a couple of tough uh, recent games. So, mm -hmm. um, But now it's you know, no longer a freshman, no longer young. We're starting that's to right. gel a little bit and have to uh, impose our will. You know, that's that's right. what's going to be important. Absolutely. Well, Mike, uh, keep scoring. Keep moving up the ladder in, in terms of the all-time scorers, and let's get a few wins, and uh, we'll see you again for playoff talk. Thanks yeah, for being on the show, great. guys. Thank okay. you. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to talk women's basketball with Kevin Clifford. Stay with us. No matter who you are, or where you're from. You are welcome here. Tu eres bienvenido. Marhaba. Ahlan wa sahlan. You are welcome you here. Are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome here. Well, we're sending congratulations out to Erin Guillen from Women's Hockey. She is this week's Athlete of the Week. Uh, the senior business major had four points during the weekend sweep of dreaded Cortland, uh, registering a goal and two assists in a 5-0 victory. And then she scored the game-winning goal in Saturday's 3-2 come-from-behind victory. Erin leads the Bengals this season. She's got 12 goals and 18 points and is Buffalo State's all-time leading scorer with 95 points on 54 goals and 41 assists in 101 games. That's uh, outstanding. So congratulations again to Aaron Guillen, this week's Athlete of the Week. And who knows, maybe we'll have an Athlete of the Week sitting right next to you one of these days, Kevin. Kevin Clifford joins us along with Katie Villarini, his outstanding freshman guard from Hamburg, as we were talking uh, off camera. And uh, Coach, it's, uh, we're down to the home stretch. Uh, I've got three, three conference games left a, as of this uh, viewing, including a non-conference, I guess, uh, against Morrisville. But what, do you, what have you liked most about this team as you get down to the home stretch? They're still playing together. They're yep. still coming every day to practice, trying to get better and improve. Uh, they're close-knit team, which is, which is nice to have uh, on and off the court. 
and we're young too. We have a young core, so uh, so they keep improving, and uh, we just got to learn how to finish the games here. Okay. So. so you're nodding your head when he said close knit, and you're one of the youngsters, mm -hmm. Katie. You're a freshman. Yep. Um, you feel that too. The the bond. What's it What's it like uh, on this team? Um, well, just right away, like I got along with all the girls. I'm roommates with um, one of them, and. It was just really easy to get to know everybody, and we play well together, so I think that's a reflection of how we are off the court. Yeah, you know, I, I, I would say that. I, I, I like the way this team plays. I, they, they do play well together. Uh, your comment to me, gosh, you, you present yourself as a senior. You're, you're, you're mature. You're mature in how you speak and on the court, but you're a freshman. Mm -hmm. um, how's it going for you this first year? Is it what you thought it would be, the college game and how well you're playing? Um, it's been a lot of fun, and I have a lot to learn from my coaches. And I was kind of thrown into a leadership role, which, I mean, it's difficult at sure. times, but, I mean, I think I'm handling it pretty well. Hey, she's accepted that leadership role. Tell me a little bit about this young lady. Yeah, Katie's a great leader, a great teammate, uh, always wants to put the team first, hardest worker in practice, wow. uh, talks and communicates every drill. Like, I haven't seen that in a long time. Coach MB and I recruited her very hard. Uh, the last year went to a lot of games. They were probably sick of seeing us at the games. But uh, she's here, and we told her that she had an opportunity to come in and play right away. And, you know, we don't promise anything, but she worked hard, and she earned it. She started 18 out of 21 games so far. She's second leading scorer. Yeah. Uh, leads the team in assists. Yes. Uh, she's top 10 in assists in the SUNYAC. Uh, very great, a very good offensive rebounder uh, for us as well, uh, and a good rebounder. Sure. She plays, she guards multiple positions. She is the point guard. Uh, she does it all. She can score. She can pass. <laughs> um, so, and it's good that she's a freshman. So we're excited for the next. So three we years. need to clone her ten more times. <laughs> is what you're saying, <laughs> yes. but but uh, I mean, um, any of this surprise you? I, I mean, when did you kind of realize? Hmm, I've got a, I've got a, I've got a shot here to start as a freshman in college. When, when did that kind of hit you? Um, I was a really big leader in high school, and a bunch of Very people, good. my families, have told me that. Like I was going to be good, and a lot of people have had confidence in me, so I just keep putting in work. And a little self-fulfilling prophecy on the family side. It's great. Uh, you're scoring. Mm -hmm. You're assisting. What do you like to do better? Um, I, I like the assists. Do you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're as, again. We're into the home stretch. Uh, playoffs are not secured. Uh, we've got Oswego, Fredonia, and let me look down here real quickly. Cortland. Um, what are the keys to beating those teams and getting into the playoffs? We're approaching one practice at a time, one game at a time. Oswego's playing better. Uh, they're going to play zone. They've been playing zone most of the year. So I think the key for the three games, it will be defense, rebounding. Uh, we're pretty good for being the smaller team. Yeah. Uh, we're even right now in the rebounding margin, but we like to be in the plus moving forward. And we have to take care of the ball. We turn the ball over and teams get points off turnovers. Okay. So I think defense, rebounding, and taking care of the ball. Making shots always helps, sure. um, but even when you don't make shots, you got to defend. So right. uh, I think we have um, we got to finish it out. We've been playing well for like 25, 30 minutes. I think we need to play for 40 minutes with energy and effort and, mm -hmm. and team. But I really like our team. Katie's leading us. Um, we believe in her. she got to believe in herself. Uh, she's hard on herself at times, but uh, we have a lot of different pieces. I don't think we have one superstar, which there you is go. nice. I think it would be somewhat comforting as we come to an end, end of the segment. When I did my research, you had some pretty good games against Oswego and Fredonia. You had 16 mm -hmm. against Oswego, 24 against Fredonia. Uh, let's talk to me about that. That's got to be comforting knowing that, you, you know, you, you've done this. Mm -hmm. You can do it. Uh, moving into these games against, really, you've got to have some wins here to get into the playoffs. Um, I just... For Fredonia, especially, my sister played there, so that was a game I really wanted to do well against. Very well. So, um, I don't know. I just just play every game like as hard as you can. Very and good. I think that we can win these last three games. Very good. Is it comforting for you to know that you know you've got somebody who's who's in a leadership role and who scored 24 and scored 16 against the opponents you're playing? Yes, she's a tremendous leader. Very coachable. Very respectful. Uh, and I think she could do a different thing. So if she's not scoring, she's dishing it out. But there's games when she's had big games, 16 points, 24 points. So uh, I think she's improved a lot. She's shooting 33% from the field. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it is really nice that she's able to do that. Right. Um, but we need other people to step up as well. Very good. Well, I wish you the best of luck these last three conference games. Let's get into the playoffs, okay? Thank you. We Sorry. are going to take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, Mark Howlett, men's soccer. But he's going to talk about community outreach. Stay with us.
This is a college that inspires. Here you'll be engaged, strive for excellence, and prepare for a career. Visit our amazing Elmwood Village campus and apply today. You'll achieve your edge here. This place is Buffalo State College. Hello everyone and welcome to Bango Update. I'm Patrick Smith with a recap of news, scores, and look at upcoming events surrounding Buffalo State Athletics. Number 13 men's hockey is 15-5-3 on the season and 8-3-3 in conference action following a 4-1 loss to number 4 Oswego on February 2nd and a 2-2 tie to Cortland on senior night on February 3rd. The Bengals clinched a playoff berth in the SUNYAC playoffs and are tied with Geneseo for second place leading into the final weekend. The Bengals return to the ice at Plattsburgh on Friday, February 9th at 7 p.m. Women's hockey improved to 13-8-2 overall and 9-4-1 in the NEWHL. The Bengals picked up a weekend sweep of Cortland with a 5-0 win on February 2nd and a 3-2 come from behind win on Senior Day on February 3rd. The Bengals clinched the number two seed in the inaugural NEWHL playoffs and will host a semifinal game on Saturday, February 24th at 4 p.m. Buffalo State returns to action on Saturday, February 17th as it travels to number one Plattsburgh at 4 p.m. for the first of a two-game series. Men's basketball swept the SUNYAC weekend to move to 8-13 overall and 4-11 in conference play. The Bengals earned an 81-77 win over New Paltz on senior night on February 2nd and used a late free throw to knock off Oneana 72-70 on February 3rd. Mike Henry is 17th in program history with 1,184 career points and is four behind number 16, Herman Jones. Buffalo State is at Oswego on Friday, February 9th at 7.30 p.m. Women's basketball is 8-13 overall and 5-10 and in SUNYAC action, following a 79-58 loss to New Paltz on senior night on February 2nd, and a 61-42 loss to Oneonta on February 3rd. With three games left, the Bengals are one game behind Fredonia for the sixth and final playoff position. Buffalo State returns to action on Friday, February 9th, with a 5-30 showdown at Oswego. Buffalo State's men and women's swimming and diving competed against five teams in the Geneseo Invitational on February 3rd. Justin Moser qualified for the NCAA regional meet and will compete in Ithaca following the SUNYAC championships. Angela McCauley led the women with two top five finishes. The Bengals will next compete at the SUNYAC championships February 21st through the 24th at the Flickinger Aquatic Center. Track and field competed against 10 teams at the RIT Invitational on February 3rd. The Bengals capitalized on its sprinting depth to finish second on the men's side and the women's captured three individual events to play seventh out of 10. The Bengals return to action on February 9th and 10th when it competes in the Boston University Valentine's Day invite. For Bengal Update, I'm Patrick Smith. Well, thanks again, Boy Wonder, for uh, the latest Bengal Update. And we're joined now by Mark Howlett. Mark's joining us uh, not to talk men's soccer, although uh, coming off a great year. We can never <laughs> say that enough, right, Mark, in the NCAA tournament. But uh, the mission of Buffalo State um, – um, is really an urban engaged campus, as our president likes to say. And I think, in, honestly, and I'm not saying this because Mark doesn't need it, but of my 30 years of working in intercollegiate athletics, I don't think there's a program that I've worked with that does more community outreach and more meaningful community outreach than the men's soccer program here at Buffalo State. And uh, Mark and I, we were talking yesterday in one of our monthly meetings, and, and I thought, you need to come on and talk about that and let, let our viewers know what men's soccer does. So uh, enough about me. Let's, let's get you to talk a little bit. Um, gate, 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 Gateway Longview, I'm sorry, is an organization that's been around for about 80 years, helping families and, and children uh, in need. Uh, and you're working with them. Tell us, tell us how you got involved with that organization. Yeah. Um you know, we're always looking to branch out and do new things. I mean, from the start, when we recruit a potential student athlete and we talk about their college experience at Buffalo State, obviously there's the academic piece, sure. there's the athletic piece, but we make it known that there's also a community outreach piece. And, uh, and that's going to be very important within their experience. Um, you know, so we're always looking to do different things. We've done things that have involved soccer, we've done things that have involved and after school programs, 
this was a unique kind of opportunity that we were able to put ourselves in shoes of less fortunate. Absolutely. Um, we're able to go into Gateway Longview's residential campus on a Friday afternoon when, you know, typically the, the young adults, the kids that are there over the weekend are there not by choice. Correct. Um, so we're able to go and brighten their kind of Friday up by going in um, and just being a resource to them. Right. If they want to talk, if they want to uh, play pickup basketball, if they want to jump rope, it's we're there to support so them. So there's no, I mean, we had talked about this yesterday about what, what the student athletes do, what you do, and there's really no set role in terms of, okay, today we're playing basketball <laughs> or soccer at, 415. You've kind of go in there, get the lead from the director, and what happens? Yep. I mean, we, <laughs> we show up at 430 every Friday. and We being the entire team. The, everybody. Very important. The entire know. team, all of the coaching staff wow. come at 430. We sign in, we go into the gym, and we wait for whoever's there to arrive. Um, we are there till six o'clock and it could be that we sit around for an hour and a half because no one really wants to do anything. That's right. It could be two or three of the youth want to play basketball and guys are just feeding them balls for them to shoot. Mm -hmm. um, could be jump rope. It could just be talking. talking. It could be sitting around in awkward silence. Sure. I mean, you know, it's, it's really dictated by what the youth there Correct. want to do. How do the student ask? I first of all, I think it's fabulous that up front during the recruiting process, you're telling them, we will be doing community mm -hmm. outreach. It is an important role in terms of men's soccer and mm -hmm. this campus. How do the how have the student athletes reacted to this? Is it I mean, I, I would think there's there's some type of, you know, hesitancy, like what yeah. am I getting into here? But ultimately there must be a reward. Yeah, I mean, I think it is just embedded in our program now. That wow. They, you know, there, there's no questions asked. Um, and when we're going to do this, we're going to do it. And I think, you know, it's interesting with this large group of seniors that, are, you know, are graduating mm -hmm. this May that are no longer with us this spring. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they say, oh, are you, are you going into Gateway Longview again? Because although at the time it may not seem so meaningful for them after the fact, they realized that they really enjoyed the experience sure. and got a lot out of it. And I think that, you know, for some of our, uh, our guys on the roster, it's not too far fetched from their own upbringing. Absolutely. So they're not too far removed from what they're seeing. Absolutely. Um, for the guys that have never seen anything like that before, it's eye opening. Yeah. And they're, they're very grateful and fortunate for the yeah. opportunities they have. It's not the only program you work with. No. You're, you've told me off, 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 offset here that we're going to reconnect with the Jericho Community yep. uh, Program through the Westside Soccer International Club. Yep. It's kind of a collaboration. Tell us a little bit about that. So the Westside uh, International Soccer Club, when I first got here five years ago, we started going in in the evenings um, and running training sessions. And, and basically it's for the refugee kids in the area very good um that they go and pick these these kids up um they shuttle them to the fields training session shuttle them back provide food and uh and they also work with the jericho road fly program that we were going into after school um to do an after school club with the same sort of uh, the same population and, and some intermixed with the soccer program and or just the Jericho Road program. So, you know, we're meeting with them again next week to see how we can get back involved Lovely. Um, Fan, and, and do a little more. Fantastic. Well, Mark, uh, I thought it was important to have you on. I, I appreciate you taking a little break from recruiting, <laughs> uh, but we, we do appreciate you telling the story and telling the, the mission of Buffalo State as an urban engaged uh, campus. Thanks very much. Thank you. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this uh, kind of interesting edition of Bengal Magazine. And uh, I want to thank everybody here in Creative Services. And I want to thank you for tuning in. And we'll see you again in two weeks for more Bengal Magazine. <music>